Now, in my last update, I told you about we had three monster storms coming that's going to bring a lot of severe weather. And we just had one of them yesterday. We still have two more coming our way. And the sad truth is, no matter how much detail, how much we try and warn people, people still don't know what's going on until it hits them. So I'm going to need your help to help put this information out, help warn other people that we have two more coming, and they're both coming next week. Now, yesterday we had 45 tornado reports, over 200 wind damage reports, plus more, which includes Kentucky. Y'all know about Alabama. Alabama really got hit. Also for Georgia, they even had tornado warnings going into South Carolina. It was so crazy yesterday. We had nasty tornadoes passing through Georgia, not just Alabama. It was the whole southeast. Huge tornado in Selma, Alabama. Catastrophic damage over there. And here's another angle of how big this storm really was. And after the tornado passed in Selma, Alabama, it was a big plume of smoke because a lot of buildings was actually on fire. Greensboro, Alabama. So many places in Alabama saw a tornado yesterday. Also by Prattville, north of Interstate 65, multiple tornadoes. You can even see how close in resemblance from Elmore County, January 12th, 2023 to Tuscaloosa County, April 27th, 2011. Even got a big shot of a huge tornado that my friend Reed Timmer has shot. Now he has a contract with AccuWeather so nobody can show his stuff whether he wants to give it to you or not. So please go to the link in the description. Go support him. He is the best weather chaser there is out there. He has his Twitter, and he also has a YouTube channel. Please go subscribe and support this man. He's the best one there is. So many tornadoes I could show you, plus the damage. The damage is all over the place. So many people got affected by these storms. Power outages went out like crazy. They're starting to come back now, but they were out. Cars were flipped over in Griffin, Georgia, at a Walmart from a tornado. Multiple states got affected yesterday. Even North Georgia by the Metro Atlanta got affected by tornadoes yesterday. Multiple power lines down. We had a tornado outbreak yesterday, guys. And the damage in Selma, Alabama has been the worst. It's all over the place. Just widespread damage in Selma, Alabama. The whole area, all over Selma. Whether it was commercial or residential, widespread damage. And it wasn't just Selma. All these tornadoes left a lot of damage, especially in Alabama. Alabama got the worst of the destruction. But definitely Selma saw the worst out of all the places. A lot of damage everywhere, but Selma definitely got the strongest tornado yesterday. I even have this drone video for you to go see of all the damage that happened in Selma, Alabama. So remember, all these videos are links in the description so you can go see them for yourself. And let's not forget a lot of hail reports as well. There was a lot of hail, a lot of damage and winds, a lot of tornadoes. Now, I put this link in the description as well. You can zoom in and go see exactly where these tornadoes were. And the list is on the right, so you can go see exactly what time and when this happened. Now, they have to go out and confirm these still, these tornadoes. Make sure it just wasn't damaging wind reports. But so far, 35 of them are confirmed. And they even had speeds up to 110 miles per hour winds. And that's the one that was in Kentucky. But sad to say, at least seven people were killed as a giant storm moved through yesterday. We had six in Alabama and one in Georgia. And Ernie Baguette, the county's emergency management director, Six of the deaths were recorded in Autauga County, Alabama, 41 miles northeast of Selma, where an estimated 40 homes were damaged or destroyed by a tornado that cut a 20-mile path across two rural communities. He also said that at least 12 people were injured severely enough to be taken to the hospitals by emergency responders. In Atlanta, the storm knocked a freight train off of the tracks. Plus, multiple people were trapped inside of an apartment complex after trees fell on it. A hobby store lost his roof and firefighters had to cut a man loose that was pinned for hours under a tree that fell on his house. Which brings us here. We still have the storm leaving out already, but we still have a nice storm coming towards California. The first one is going to be a weak one. Bring some rainfall, maybe a little bit of severe weather in the south. 
not a lot. We still have a big storm going towards California on the 16th, going down Southern California by the 17th. If you're from California, you probably heard me say this over a week now, I've been trying to warn of this setup that we're going into. The same system is going to come into the U.S. and bring a lot of severe weather, our next round of severe weather. Matter of fact, this smaller storm that comes before it is going to prime the atmosphere and get it nice and moisturized with dew points and a lot of heat. So when this one comes up, it's really going to strengthen up and be another strong one. This is all the way from the 17th all the way to the 20th for the east side of the U.S., as that next dip comes in all the way from the 20th through the 25th. And that's going to be our next severe weather after that. So we still have two more coming before this month is over and maybe a third one after that. Now, usually during this tornado season, the tornadoes ramp up, especially for April and May. They go all the way up to over 200 to 250 tornadoes a month. Then it goes back down in June around 150 plus tornadoes then it drops dramatically again so april and may is going to be even worse so this is not going away anytime soon please help me keep people alert as much as we can to the upcoming weather patterns so people can be warned so we don't see any more loss of life so to keep it as short as i can so i don't go talking about all these storms every single time i'm gonna show you the updates on the upcoming ones just so you can get the updates and it's not a super long video so after this Smaller one comes through around the 15th, the 16th, and the 17th. This is going to bring some rain, maybe a little bit of snow, but it's going to help prime the atmosphere with moisture as we get this big dip. And this is going to California first, bringing y'all some winds. So you got to be aware of that. Also, there will be some more flood watches coming out when this gets closer. This does come into our U.S., and it does get a negative tilt all the way up towards the upper Midwest, Ohio Valley, and I'm talking about these storms in front. It's not the ball itself. It's what it brews up in front of this system as it comes over for the 19th and the 20th. And you see how it strengthens up. Now, this is bringing some more cold temperatures and some major snowfall with this next monster storm, guys. So let's go through what we know. So far, risk of hazardous temperatures from the 20th through the 26th. In this blue area here, you're in a slight risk from 24th through the 26th for some very cold negative temperatures passing through. Also for the southwest, as this strong system comes across, it's going to carry that cold air before it comes to the center of the U.S. We also have precipitation outlooks all the way from the 20th through the 21st on the first storm that's coming through. You have a slight risk for heavy precipitation. And I'm showing it's going to turn into major rainfall a system after system is just going to be affecting the same areas we also have wind hazards coming in from the 20th through the 22nd this is all the next storm this isn't the big one after that as well you have a slight risk for high winds and all this light brown also for southern california as that big storm comes in and it transitions south on the 17th and the snow hazards and this is only the beginning but already from the 21st to the 22nd you're in a slight risk for heavy snowfall in this purple section and it is moving slowly to the east from the 22nd to the 23rd in this section and it's still trending major snowfall so also what we know is the dew points when we go up to the 15th that first system that's coming through it is the weaker one the one right after that is a strong one it's not pulling super strong dew points up but there is some severe weather that could be in the south from that little system that it brews up. But most importantly, as it goes overnight to early morning hours, the whole atmosphere has been primed, has been ready to create storms. All you need is that daytime heating. And as soon as that storm comes in from California to the center of the U.S., we start getting our line right here where we're going to create our severe weather and our dew points raise up and stay strong all the way through that system to the East Coast. That's all the way to the 20th. Then we have another one that's going to be coming in. It's going to be a little small. Then we got the big one, the third one that's coming in. It's going even higher up in the U.S. And this will bring another big round of severe weather, stronger dew points. Like I showed in my last video, all these monster storms are going to end up with a big bang, a potential big freeze. I will update you that in another video. This one is about the severe weather coming. 
So just keeping it one storm at a time. You can see here with the Euro, you do get a nice storm on the West Coast, bringing a lot more rainfall. Then you get that big storm that comes in, and it's, it's a strong one, especially for the center of the U.S., and as it goes down California to Southern California, then we get that small one across the U.S. And you can see it's not too severe. But that one that comes from California will become our next monster storm from the 18th all the way to the 20th, all the way across to the East Coast. And it's bringing a lot of high winds. You can see that with the isobars, they are very tightly wound it up. So it will be a lot of high winds that's involved in this. It will be a lot of major snow, but it also will be a nasty squall line. Once again, that's going to go across the south, the southeast, even getting strong enough to get up in the Ohio Valley with some strong thunderstorms. And being that close to the low pressure, you really got to watch out for rotation. And you can see when you look further from the 21st to the 22nd, we have that chance for some southern snow. You get another severe weather event that's going to happen, and there's going to be another one after that. We're in this pattern all the way until the end of January, guys. So help me alert people. I'm going to try and keep you as much warnings, as much information as I can as we go through this, but I can't do it without you guys. But we do know with that next monster storm coming all the way to the 20th, it is bringing major snowfall also for the western side of the U.S. and the northern half of the New England states. A lot of heavy snowfall. You can also see almost the same thing with the GFS. The impacts are different areas. That's why I'll update you when we get closer, when we know better information. But it's still showing around the same area. And we're still showing that next monster storm has that potential to bring that next snowfall southern. And you can see this with National Weather Service. So all the way until the 15th, they get that storm system on the west coast. It's going to go all the way actually to the 16th and 17th down the south of the California. But it comes across the U.S. We get that weak system. They're getting that other one. And then that one comes across us as well bringing us our snowfall, bringing us our severe weather, and it does keep bringing that same track of snow like we've been seeing in the model data while it brings all this severe weather all the way to the east coast. And we also know it's bringing some winds. So this next one that's coming from California, the wind starts picking up, but it gets really strong as soon as it gets to the center of the U.S., all the atmosphere is primed, and it goes all the way to the east coast. And look how much stronger these winds are getting. Now we're seeing the red in there, which is very high winds. We haven't seen the red yet, and it's showing more and more strength just with the next one. And by the 18th, when it comes across, this is pretty much the rainfall you're going to get for California. It's pretty much going to slack down after that. Washington and Oregon will get some more because of the pattern we're going into. If you've been here before, you know what I'm talking about. But you still have a lot more heavy rainfall coming, especially for northern California. And when it comes across, we have that precipitation outlook. And you can see how it just adds up storm after storm. And then the next monster storm is going to add up again. We have a lot of precipitation coming after these train of storms. Now, Storm Prediction Center don't have any outlooks out, not even anything from the 4th through the 8th day. But SIPS is showing that when that small system comes across around the 16th and 17th, there is a 10% chance of severe weather. But when the big system comes right behind that, that's where it's going to start building up to our severe weather. And there is going to be an outlook for this. You can see how much chances of severe weather is already kicking in on day six for SIPs. And it is showing that there is chances for tornadoes, there's chances for hail, there's chances for winds. This is going to be the beginning of the severe weather on the first monster storm coming. We still have a second one that's coming as well. Plus, remember, today I'm giving away another weather station. So remember, put the word radar in the comments. You must be a subscriber. You must hit the like button. You must put the comment in the comments of the word radar to be qualified to win. I give these away every other day all year long for my subscribers because we're the greatest community, in my opinion, a really good bunch of people. and I love to give back as much as I can. But you also get a lot of information. You're hooked up to all the other weather stations that are everywhere. And all you got to do is zoom in to where it's not so many because there's so much out there. But you're also linked in. There's an app for your phone. It goes through your, your Wi-Fi and your house, everything. But it gives you all this information that you need. And this is the best way to know what the conditions are on the severe weather 
right in your own backyard. So if you don't want to wait for the call outs all year, you can get one in the description under my discount code. Now, so far as we go to the 17th and 18th, that's roundabout when we get that next strong system. Now this is right where you're gonna see everything. We have our cold front coming in right here. We have our warm front coming up over here. So here's your area for severe weather. And you can see this also with your dew points. You're in the high 60 dew points just beginning with this day. And it does go all the way up to high 50s, almost 60s in Tennessee. Now all you need is 55 to have thunderstorms. And once you get more than that, then you get more than that. So it's pretty strong what is going to happen with that. And it's going to be another low flip after that, pushing further to the southeast. So we definitely are looking around the same area that's going to be for severe weather for this next storm coming. Now, there has been a lot of pain yesterday on a lot of people. And I just want to say personally for myself, God bless you and your families. If you're going through these storms or have been going through these storms, I pray that God fully restores you and very quickly, as well as heal you for all you with your loss of life. God bless you. I really go out to you with my heart. I'd like to read something to you today. John 17, 9 through 19. Give me a minute. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. God bless you all. May you have a very happy Friday. If you've never been here before, Sabbath is Friday from sundown to sundown Saturday, and you're not supposed to work on Sabbath unless lives are at risk. And these next two big storms are coming next week. So I will see you again on Sunday morning. But most importantly, through all these storms we go through and all the storms we go through in our lives, I pray God blesses every single one of you. And remember, all glory always goes to Yahweh, our Father in heaven, and he will keep you safe. Pray to him. He loves to answer prayers. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great Friday, everybody.